If you saw my last video, there's a good chance you noticed how bad the wiring was on the balance card. And when I say that it was bad, I don't mean that it was like really bad. I just mean that there was a lot of it and it actually looked pretty good for the amount of it that I had. And so today I'm going to show you guys how I went about fixing that problem and how you can go about fixing that problem as well. Because there's a program called Fritzing that makes it really, really easy to interconnect all these different things together. To connect your gyroscope to your controller and your potentiometers and your motor controller. This is a lot easier than you think it is. And I discovered this program kind of by accident. And so I would really like to share this with you guys. So today I'm going to show you how you can take a breadboard schematic or just a simple wiring diagram, turn that into a actual schematic and then put that on a circuit board. Then I'm also going to show you how you can order these PCBs through a service called Eisler, where you can order these boards for about $7 a piece and receive them in just over a week. So let's start setting up our uh, schematic and we'll go from there. So once you download and install Fritzing, which I'm not going to show you how to do, it will present you with a breadboard. And on the right side of the screen, you can grab components and just start throwing them on this breadboard. For this example, I need to take five volts from the RC receiver and drop that down to 3.3 volts for the Teensy. And I'll need to do 2.2K and 1K to get the proper output voltage on these. And then I'll go ahead and connect the grounds together so they all have a common ground. And then I'll run that back to the rail. For now, I'm just going to branch off three wires, which will eventually connect back to a header that will connect to the RC receiver. So the Teensy 3.6 isn't a part that's included with Fritzing. You can actually just download this uh, and then you open the file and it will automatically import it into Fritzing. And it only has one small problem with it that I'll show you how to work past later. But yeah, then it'll pop up in the mine library and then you could drag it onto the screen here and connect wires to that too. So we'll grab some digital inputs on the Teensy and start connecting these wires in between. So we'll get the 3.3 volts out of our voltage divider. Then if you go ahead and search for 6050, the MPU 6050 will pop up. Uh, you can go ahead and drag that onto the screen. So we'll go ahead and hook up our SCL and SDA lines according to the paper that came with the Teensy that's really handy to keep around. We'll tie its VCC into the 5 volt line. We might also be able to tie it into 3.3 volts, but 5 volts is a safer bet because it has an onboard regulator. And then we'll tie our VN pin for the TNC also into that same 5 volt line. And we can't forget to connect this interrupt pin. I suppose it'd be uh, wise to make some of these wires different colors. And as you can see, you can just search for anything in Fritzing and common stuff, it will have it. This is one of the best parts of Fritzing as a program because you could just search for this stuff and it just is there. If you tried to do this in Eagle, it's probably not going to present you a potentiometer. So this is nice that Fritzing has this search functionality built in. So we'll just quickly zip through connecting up these potentiometers. As long as I don't connect them to the 5 volt bus, they do not belong connected to the 5 volt bus. You need to make sure you don't make that mistake. We'll make the other side of the board here the 3.3 volt bus. That's what we'll do. Then we'll come over to the core menu and find the pin header. Drag that on, uh, change the number of pins to, what is it, eight? And then start connecting wires to it. This is where our RC receiver will connect up and our uh, O drive. So here's channel one, two, and three coming in. Power and five volts for the RC receiver. And then we're gonna connect up the O drive stuff, which is gonna have a diode which is going to prevent the Teensy from backfeeding power into the O-Drive's 5-volt bus. Now we're going to grab a couple of resistors which aren't necessarily needed, but they'll protect the O-Drive's uh, serial port and the Teensy's serial port if that one ground wire ever comes disconnected between the two. They will limit the amount of current that can flow between the two components. All right, well, our wiring diagram is pretty complete at this point, and uh, we'll jump over to board view and start dragging the stuff onto the board and uh, laying that out. So we can actually switch over to the schematics tab now and see that if we wanted to, we could complete this schematic. We could make changes to the schematic that would propagate to the breadboard view and the PCB view, but we can also just ignore this tab entirely. 
this tab is not necessary to use fritzing to make the board view. So you can go back to something that's at least somewhat familiar to you again. So now we're looking at a bunch of components that you just drag onto the board however you think you want them and uh, just kind of place them around and try to get these lines that connect them to be as short as possible. And from here, you'll notice that just clicking on the dotted line that goes between different components will uh, essentially create a PCB trace. So by default with fritzing, you're gonna create a PCB that just has two layers. That is one layer on the front and one layer on the back. I believe the yellow uh, wires are the front layers and the orange wires are the back layers. And though it will let you overlap them and it won't give you a warning right now, towards the end, it actually will. So what we're gonna have to do to get these two wires to cross is to uh, go a different path or we could use a via. So we'll go back over to core parts and we'll find the via and we'll drag that onto the circuit board. Now the thing about the via that you should know is that if you click right in the center of the via, it's gonna connect a wire there. But if you connect around the outside edge, it will actually allow you to drag that via. All right, so now we'll just go and lay out the rest of the board as best as we can. A couple good rules to know are to pick either horizontal or vertical and try to keep those on one layer uh, as much as you can. You, I mean, you don't have to stick to it 100%, but it will help you out a lot at the beginning to do something like that. Um, later, after a certain point, I realized that I should probably not be putting traces that have sharp 90 degree corners in them. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure why that's a thing, but it's a thing. Uh, so uh, later on you'll see me turn those into 45 degree corners. Here I'm just going to switch around two of these potentiometers just to make the wire routing a bit better. Go and tweak some of this stuff up here. You know, if I switched two of these resistors around, these traces wouldn't be so funky. Yeah, let's do it over here. We'll go back to here, we'll switch the resistors around. Yeah, that's much better. Now the wires don't have to cross each other. Anytime you can make wires not cross, it's better. All right, so we'll hook up the ground and, and the voltage in. Um, Can't forget to connect the grounds to the other end of the voltage dividers. I still haven't figured out how to rotate these labels for resistors. I really don't know how you're supposed to do that with fritzing. All right, let's do our first DRC. Uh, so first off, what it's gonna do is give you a bunch of errors uh, for the pads on the Teensy because remember earlier I said this was an issue. The pads are all only on the top layer, but not on the bottom layer. So rather than fix that, there's a workaround that I'll show you in just a bit. Uh, but for now, I'm fixing all the other errors that came up in the DRC and just running it again and again and again until all the errors are gone. So here I'll grab a 24-pin connector and another 24-pin connector. And I'm not going to actually connect anything to these. I'm just going to overlap the teensy pins with them. And that's going to fix my DRC problem because now it's going to force it to have pads on the top and the bottom. And it's also going to give me twice as many DRC errors. But as long as none of them are overlapping wires, everything will be fine. Another really cool thing about Isler that makes them stand out from their competitors is that they don't force you to spend a whole bunch of time configuring what kind of Gerber files you're going to output. Like if you've ever tried to upload boards to a board website, you probably had to deal with this where you didn't have the right version of Gerber files or didn't have the right ones selected. It's a total pain in the This is why Isler took the time to actually integrate so that all you do is upload your entire project file. That's all you do. And it's really easy and it just does everything for you and pops up with a picture of your board and says, do you want to buy this? It's really easy to use. This could be a bit of an issue. As you see, this hole is pretty close to this through hole pad. Uh, and you could see just a little bit of copper showing. It's possible that if you weren't careful soldering this, 
uh, it would pull that pin to ground. I think I'm going to leave it that way though. Yeah, that's just a serial boss. It won't matter that much, right? So yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I, for whatever reason, the circuit board guys say that you don't want to do sharp 90 degree corners on your traces if you don't have to. So uh, I guess I'll just get rid of those. It's not too bad or not too hard to do. So. All right, we got a ground fill. Now let's upload this to Eisler again. This company named Eisler, which is actually spelled A-I-S-L-E-R, is actually a spin-off of the man Paul Eisler. Uh, and the proper pronunciation is Eisler because this company's name is sort of a nod to Paul Eisler and his work of basically inventing the circuit board. This is the man who had the idea of inventing the circuit board while he was working at a printing press. A big thanks to Eisler for sponsoring this video and this project. If you would like to support this video and today's sponsor, you can get 50% off your first order by using the link in the description and the code GDFW50. As it turns out, after I designed this board, got it from Eisler and assembled it, I found out that I made a pretty big mistake. You see, I was designing this board so that I could sell this to people and basically forced them to put the gyroscope really close to the teensy so you wouldn't have a certain problem. And what I ended up doing was creating that problem. So I put the gyro way over here and the teensy connects to it back over here. And this board doesn't work so well. So I actually went about redesigning this board. And at the time I didn't realize that with, that with fritzing you actually can do surface mount components. So I went about using a completely different software package called Autodesk Eagle, which I might show you guys how to use someday. But for now, I'm just gonna show you the process of assembling the components onto the board that I received from Eisler, and I'll show you guys how it works. So as you can see on this board, I decided to spring for pretty much all surface mount components because it saves so much space and it allowed me to add a lot of functionality to the board, such as the four position dip switch, which allows you to change settings without having to download again, and the two buttons, one of which is a reset button, the other one's just a digital input. Um, you'll also notice that I actually added the IMU right onto the board. So you no longer need the additional breakout board and the only reason those pins are still there is just in case that didn't work. So it does actually work, I have tried it. Uh, so you don't need to plug in an external IMU, which is really cool. So if you guys end up buying this board and putting it on the balance car if you're building one, uh, you won't even need to plug in an external IMU, it'll just have one on board. I, you also notice that my solder stencil, I tried to save $12 and 3D print it, and it was not worth my time whatsoever. Uh, as you can see here, there's a lot of stuff that has too much solder, and I have to clean up around a lot of this stuff. You'll also notice there's a few places where I screwed up, a few places I had to scratch off the ground plane and uh, connect a resistor down because I forgot to ground one end of it. Uh, so I'm clearly not the most uh, experienced in this, but I was able to make a board that's functional and that made me pretty proud. So yeah, as I learn how to put these together, I'm, I'm going to be posting these on Tindy and maybe eBay. I'll put a link to that below if you'd like. Uh, and yeah, just this is a, a board basically to control the balance car that was in my previous video. This just reduces the amount of wiring that you need for that significantly. So here I'm putting on a voltage regulator. This is basically for if you're not building the balance car or if you're putting servos on this board, this provides you uh, an amp and a half of, of five volt power to drive a servo because otherwise you'd be trying to pull a lot of current from the Teensy's voltage regulator and that wouldn't be very good. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'd like to thank Eisler so much for sponsoring this video. It's really awesome when I can have uh, companies jump in and help me out with these projects. I really do like this company. The boards that I ordered from them are beautiful. They worked flawlessly, except for the stuff that I screwed up in the schematic. And yeah, thank you guys for watching.